What is happening, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of k and Radio Stuff's Mailbag Monday. It's our 21st episode. We just turned 21. That means we get to drink. <laughs> but it's only 1030 in the morning, so I'm going to... I'm gonna go ahead and not do that. <laughs> but what a what a what a tremendous milestone it is, anyway, guys. If you want to have your questions answered on Mailbag Monday, shoot me an email k8mrd at icloud.com, and in the description, do put Mailbag Monday, and that way I will see your emails. And if I know the answer, maybe I'll try and answer it. <laughs> so <laughs> we got a lot of great questions for you today. So let's dive right in. This one I really like. This is about. Uh, battery monitoring, something I'm very much into. So this is actually in relation to the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2, which is unfortunately unavailable. This viewer is writing in, what watt meter would I recommend for monitoring the battery so he doesn't deplete it to the point of no return? Finally taking the plunge to activate parks on the air, he became more aware of the battery usage, wanting to get the best performance and longevity out of his investment. Uh, although I know the 12 amp hours will do a nice job for me, I'd like to have the ability to see at what rate the battery is discharging. This will allow me to have a better idea uh, of how long I can run between charges. So that's question one. Uh, so let's answer that really quick. So uh, the Buddy Pole Power Mini 2 is fantastic. And from what I understand, they're, they're having to source a new uh, part, a new chip for it. Uh, much like everything else, chips are just, yeah, good luck. So um, initially, so basically inline watt meters are your solution. Things like like these, okay? Let me switch to, uh, let me switch to another camera. Like these here, okay? Whoops. <laughs> Some kind of inline watt meter. Now I have a bunch, I've got four of them actually. So I've got two from this company called Ank Power, who knows? I don't know. I just bought these on Amazon, not affiliated at all. Um, so I bought these two and I've got another one that just says 150 amps on it. And the first one I got that I touted very high praises initially was this one from PowerWorks. Uh, I'm going to say don't buy from PowerWorks. They're a ripoff. And all of these are as equally inaccurate as the next. And I'll show you here on the screen. Uh, you can see all four of these plugged in. None of them are showing the same voltage. Uh, even compared to my Klein ammeter, uh, they're all just different. And they also all show a different number uh, of amp hours that are going through them. So the, the voltage is inaccurate and the amount of amp hours that they show is inaccurate. They're close enough to, to get you what you need out in the field. And just to show you, if you've never used one of these, you're simply going to plug one side says source, one side said load. So the source you're going to plug into your power supply or your battery, and that's what you get. OK, so you can see this is showing 14.03 volts, which I strongly doubt because I'm on a Yaesu power supply that I know puts out 13.8. But nonetheless, that's what they look like. This bottom is going to cycle between your peak current, uh, peak volts. Uh, it's going to count your amp hours so that you get a lot of information out of these things. Uh, but knowing that every single one of them in, is inaccurate, and, and by the way, I wouldn't spend more than about $25. PowerWorks, uh, I used to tout these very highly. Like I said, it's an absolute ripoff. I think these are about $65. They are literally all exactly the same thing. They just put different stickers with names on them. Uh, I think this one was like $15. These from Ang Power, I think I got two of these for 50 bucks, something like that. These are halfway decent, um, but again, none of them are, are super accurate. But my advice would be, regardless of which one you get, what I always do is I'll take my battery, make sure it's charged full, plug your watt meter in between your battery and your radio, turn your radio on, and just let it go. Now, I have a spare, a couple spare cell phones that are just old, and I actually will just set the radio on so I know my Yaesu 891 draws one amp on receive. So I will actually do a time lapse of the, uh, the meter here and because these will turn off once the battery is dead and you'll lose all the information. Once you unplug it, they, they reset. So nothing gets saved on these. But by doing a time lapse, you'll see how many amp hours this will say your battery got. And that way you have kind of a a benchmark to go by. So say you have a 12 amp hour battery, I would expect 11 and 11 and a half amp hours out of it. And if this only showed like 10 and a half, well, you can know that once you start getting towards 10 and a half amp hours, 
your battery is going to be depleted there. So um, that would be what I would do. Uh, the Buddy Pole Power Mini seems to be quite accurate. I am very, very pleased with that. I have one. Uh, I'm waiting to do a review on it because they don't have any to sell. So it's pointless for me to review something and you can't get it. So I'm waiting for Buddy Pole to get restocked in those. But I highly, highly recommend the Buddy Pole Power 2 Mini, Power Mini 2. It is phenomenal. I love it. But in the meantime, these are just not Power Works. Don't buy Power works unless you just have money to burn um because you'll get the same results out of the other ones but they're a very good option uh in the meantime now to answer the second part of your question uh lastly since i use the battery in the shack to get a cleaner power to the radio can the charger be plugged into the battery while operating from the battery much like using a solar charge controller when on solar so i wasn't actually a hundred percent on this so I, I reached out to kevin from bioeno he tells me it's absolutely fine to use your charger i was concerned would it damage the charger at all no worries at all the only issue that he brought up if your battery isn't charged and you're actually using your radio and uh you know pulling a lot of current out of it it's probably going to take twice as long to actually charge the battery than uh, if, if you weren't powering on the radio. But if you're using a charger that's capable of delivering more current than what you're actually using, much like my solar panels usually give about five amps and uh, my radio draws one amp on receive. So uh, yes, you can power the radio and charge your battery at the same time, no problem. So thanks for writing in. I hope that answers your question. I will, I'll try and leave some affiliate links below for some of these so you can run to Amazon and pick one up as well. So. Thanks for writing in. This next question comes from my Wolf River Coils series of videos that I did about counterpoise wires, uh, comparing the three longer counterpoise wires that come with the antenna versus I made 15 two meter antennas. And this viewer writes, uh, I just watched both of the counterpoise videos. What if I used both? How much is too much? Now, given that I basically stole this idea from Callum from DX Commander, I reached out to my friend Callum and uh, he recorded a little video to kind of talk a little bit more in depth. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, Callum and I are planning on doing uh, a, a series of videos. I think he's going to do a recorded video and then we're going to do a live stream just talking about counterpoise wires because this is a fascinating subject. There's some great research on it. There's a great article. Uh, by Rudy Sevens or Severns or something, I believe, uh, that he's done a lot of research and this is kind of where Callum bases his stuff off of and kind of where I stole from Callum. So uh, we will be having a great live stream about this. I'm not sure when yet, but hopefully soon. And uh, without any further ado, take it away, Lord Callum. Mike, that is actually an exceptional question. So the only, the only person we can truly rely on uh, of who's done this this research, a fellow called Rudy Sevens. And I, I'm looking at his document here. I explain what this means, basically. He's got a graph here, and what he's done at the bottom, he's got the number of radials, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc., etc. And he plotted that against a couple of things. One of the things he plotted it against is a quarter wave, and the other thing he, he, he plotted it against was 7.5, a 7.5 foot um, whip. Now, what band was this? I think it was 40 meters. Yes, it was the 40 meter band. So it should be quite interesting because what we've got is the double and half. <laughs> what do I mean? Because he did this fantastic experiment where he took all these radials, let's say 16 radials. Well, I'll just draw eight for the time being, okay? He took 16 radials and then what he did, because I don't think anybody had done this. He cut them all in half and, and added them back in. That's later in the document. And I'll give Mike this, this link. So he ended up with 16 to 32 radials for half the size. And the difference in signal gain or loss was so negligible, it's hardly worth writing about. So that's quite interesting, number one. And we can see if we follow the graph from four radials on a quarter wave now all right we can see we from zero it's a stake in the ground plus the coax that was his baseline he added four he got one db extra gain he added eight and he got up to just over one and a half <coughs> db gain over zero you see and then you see at 16 he got 2.2 it says it says here that's on a quarter wave all right so i've covered this i've covered the quarter wave now Mike and I have been talking about an antenna that is recommended to have three radials, okay? A very compact thing with a coil and stuff. 
That's much more dramatic because that goes from four radials, which I think is, by the look of it, four radials. He did four, it must be this one. From zero to four, there it is, 2.5. So he went from 2.5, then he added another four and went to four dB gain from zero. And then he went to 16 and he ended up with five. Okay, so you can see this top graph makes more makes more of a difference. So there is quite a substantial difference from four to eight. One of the few actually that it does. It goes from two and a half to to four. So in, sort of in and it, assuming we're talking about three radials to start with, we're probably into one and a half, maybe two dB difference if you add more radials. That's the science. And just before I go and pass back to Mike. I did an experiment with three and a half meter long radials. Mike will tell us how many feet that is in a minute. About 10 feet or so, 10, 11 feet. 35 of them on the 80 meter band. Okay, so I'll just write that down. So 3.5 meters on 80 meters. That is the same as, uh, what's half of 35? Seven, 1.75 meters on the 40 meter band or some insignificant on the 20 meter band. Eight and a bit, eight meet, eight, eight point eight. It's, it's about that big, okay, on the 20 meter band. And I still cross the Atlantic on 80 meters. So it's not that you won't get any signal, it's just you'll get less if you put few down, that's all. But there is an optimum, I would say, Mike, getting on, on a full size quarter wave, any more than 16, you're kind of breaking the limits. But on a really compact thing, I'd be aiming, well, probably for 16. <laughs> All right, or 32 very small ones, half size. Okay, back to Mike. And there you have it from DX Commander himself. What a great answer. Thank you, Callum, for uh, taking the time out of your day to record that for our viewers. Appreciate it. Next up, another antenna question. This viewer writes, been watching your videos on unfed half-wave antennas, including the spark plug antenna, which is very interesting. My question is, with limited funds, uh, which spark plug NFED half wave or other NFED half wave antenna is the best for the money? The best of the best of the best, sir. So I have, <laughs> I have a lot of NFED half waves. This is most of them. I, I had to get a box for them. <laughs> I have so many. Uh, they're definitely not all in here. Uh, here's the Chameleon Lightweight NFED Sloper. Here's a pack antenna that I put soda beams wire on. Here's something a viewer sent me that I haven't reviewed yet. Uh, this is the Cartena NFED. Uh, let's see, this is the KM4 ACK. This is the K6 ARK. What else do I have in here? Oh, here's another pack Tenna. And I think that's it. Yeah. So, needless to say, I like my NFED half waves. Now, given that you did not give me a dollar amount, I am going to answer this. Uh, just in the best of the best of the best portion of your question. So let's say that your limited funds are $125, okay? My answer, and I've said this 100 times, I'll say it 100 more. My absolute favorite NFED half-wave antenna in the world is the Pactenna NFED half-wave 49 to 1, okay? Now let me tell you why. Number one. It handles 100 watts, sideband, uh, I believe 50 CW, okay? It's got nice 26 gauge wire on it. Now he's, he's uh, I've been using this, I made this linked uh, like the day I got it, and now he's selling them as a linked uh, antenna. So you get 40, 20, 15, and 10. I had another one that I, this was a prototype actually for the linked. Uh, that wasn't actually cut to resin. It was a very, a very early prototype. So I actually made this. I put soda beams wire on it and I added a 17 meter link. So I have a 17 meter link and a 20 meter link. So now I have 40, 20, 17, 15, and 10 on this one antenna. But never mind this. As it comes stock, look at how small that is. It fits in the palm of my hands, okay? Here's the Chameleon Lightweight and Fed Sloper. Yes, this handles higher power. This handles, I think, 500 watts, but I'm not bringing an amplifier out in the field, so I don't really care. This is a great antenna, but it's also $200. Kits are very easy. 
Like the K6 ARK, this is 25 bucks for the transformer, but then you gotta buy the wire. Best of the best of the best, uh, I mean, George from Pac-10 hit it out of the park. Just the, the design of this, how it's a wire winder integrated with the, the toroid in there, your BNC, there's a hole there for, there, there's multiple points to attach this to a tree or however you wanna mount this. It is the absolute perfect design. And if you notice the other antennas, they all try to copy it, okay? pac was first, everyone else is second. It is the most compact, lightweight, highest power uh, NFET half-wave in my arsenal. And that is why I tout over and over again the pac NFET half-wave 49 to 1 is my absolute, one of my absolute favorite antennas in the world. Not even just in the NFET half-wave. All of the antennas that I own, the pac is number one, okay? Or two, it's, you know, the DX Commander Expedition is my other favorite. But uh, yeah, NFET half-wave, get a pac -tena. I will leave links for other ones, though, because I want to support Jason Cam for ack I want to support uh, Adam K6ARK. They both make kits that are much less expensive. Out the door, you might be about 50 bucks, about half the price, but you do need to build them. So there's that. So I'll leave links for all three of these in the description, uh, and I'll leave, you know, there'll be affiliates where possible. So great question. Thank you for tuning in, and thanks for writing. I appreciate it. Lastly, we got an easy one. This viewer writes... When I set up at a park to activate, I will typically comb the band and knock out a couple park to parks to ensure my signal is getting out and they can hear me. Yes, that's a good practice uh, and a lot of folks do that. It's always nice to get a couple park to parks right off the bat. My question is, should I be taking credit for those QSOs towards my 10 QSOs for activation? abso freaking lutely yes. Any contact you make in a park, any, doesn't matter what band, doesn't matter what mode, you could be on sideband, FM, CW, AM, doesn't matter. You could be talking to a space station. You could be on a handheld on 146.52, standing two feet away from another guy on 146.52. So long as it's a simplex contact, it counts. Does not matter, okay? Just no repeaters, no, no Earth-bound repeaters, okay? Satellites, ISS, those count, okay? Doesn't matter, there's, there's almost no rules. And you can't be on private property. There are private properties inside parks. Uh, so if yes, theoretically, I could do 10 park to park activations uh, in the park I'm in as long as I'm staying in the band. Yes, I have done that. I literally sat in my car with my Wolf River coils on the trunk and I made, there were so many people on the bands uh, in parks one day when I was out. I'm like, just tuning around and you know what? I, I heard every one of them. I'm looking at the POTUS spotting page and I made 10 park to parks and activated the park and left. So yes, you absolutely can do that. And as far as staying in the band you can be on any band you want uh so long as you're within your privileges obviously you know if you're not if you're not an extra stay out of the extra portion that kind of thing but you can hop bands you can do whatever the heck you want if you want one contact on cw then one contact on sideband then one contact on fm does not matter so long as you're making simplex contacts in the park they count and yes you absolutely should be logging those so hey hopefully that clears that up as far as actually uh confirming the park to park numbers i'm not 100 percent certain we even need to do that that's just kind of a thing we do uh because the software i believe picks up um if i'm at this park and you're at this park it knows we made a contact so i'm pretty sure the software in the parks on the air automatically detects those park to parks uh but we log them anyway so super glad you're out getting parks on the air contacts and activating the parks it's great it's keeping the bands alive and uh it's, it's, a, it's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> so awesome. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for writing in. And just like that, our 21st birthday is over. I want to thank you all for writing in your wonderful questions. And if you have a question for me, shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com. In the subject, just put Mailbag Monday. Don't be shy. Write in. There's no stupid questions. Only stupid people. Remember that. And you're not one of them. <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, we will see you again on another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.